31st, 2015. Ms. Park, please Mayor. call the roll. Mayor, hold on a second. Do you want to start over? One more time. We're good? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Commitment Delcor? Here. Commitment McCauley? Here. Commitment Zarachi? Here. Deputy Mayor Burchette? Mayor Thompson? Here. Please join me in a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be advised that in accordance with Section 5 of the Open Publics Meeting Act, Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1975, that notice of this meeting was made by the posting on the bulletin board at the Hillsborough Township Municipal Complex and notifying the officially designated newspapers this meeting would take place at the Hillsborough Township Municipal Complex at 7.30 p.m. on September 21st, 2015. First up this evening, we have the approval of the April 28th, 2015 Executive Session Meeting Minutes. May I have a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mayor Zalcor. Yes. Mayor McCauley. Yes. Mayor Sirachi. Yes. Mayor Thompson. Yes. Next up is approval of the May 12th, 2015 executive session meeting minutes. May I have a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mayor Zalcor. Yes. Mayor McCauley. Yes. Mayor Sirachi. Yes. Deputy Mayor Burchette. Uh, I'm sorry, Mayor Thompson. Abstain. Uh, moving on to the meeting minutes of May 26, 2015, executive session. May I have a motion to approve those minutes? Move to approve. Second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Commander Mandelcourt. Yes. Commander McCauley. Yes. Commander Mansarachi. Yes. Mayor Thompson. Yes. Moving on to reports from committee liaisons. Uh, first up is Commander Mandelcourt. Thank you, Mayor. A um, couple of items. Uh, recently attended a uh, couple of grand openings, part of the EBDC. Uh, both Gary's Wine Marketplace and Flair Dance Academy. So I'd like to thank them for uh, their uh, bringing and opening their businesses here in Hillsborough. It's always nice when we get an opportunity to uh, to open some new businesses, and both had uh, tremendous crowds. So it's nice to see them both out there. Um, it is flu season, and uh, unfortunately, that season is upon us. Uh, those of you that are considering obtaining a flu shot for this coming uh, for this coming season, um, the health department will offer flu shots for residents here at the municipal complex on Wednesday, September the 30th from 2 to 4 p.m. and 5 to 7 p.m. And then also on October 1st, that's a Thursday, from 4 to 7 p.m. Uh, they can also be uh, given by your regular physician, walk-in medical facility, or other pharmacies. Uh, if you don't want to come here, but we recommend uh, if you're interested, get the flu shots. The more people that get the shot, uh, the less the uh, flu will circulate. The seasonal flu vaccinations uh, here in Hillsborough are available to anyone 18 years or older, uh, and they need to be a Hillsborough Township or Millstone Borough resident. Uh, the, uh, there is a $25 charge to all participants, unless there's a Medicaid Part B card, uh, unless that's presented. Medical insurance, you know, standard medical insurance will not be accepted at the uh, here at the Hillsborough uh, Township Clinic. If there are individuals with severe uh, allergies to eggs or other severe allergies, um, they may be excluded from receiving the vaccine. Also, anyone that's sick at the time uh, may have a fever. Uh, they, they may not be able, they may not be able to receive the vaccine on that day. Pre-registration is not required. Uh, and the clinic will be held as long as the vaccine is received. So um, if you could check the website, uh, www.hillsborough-nj.org for any schedule changes. But once again, that's the 30th, uh, Wednesday, September 30th, and Thursday, October the 1st. Uh, from recreation, uh, we'll be having our children's Halloween party. Uh, that's Thursday, October the 29th. Uh, you can come in, get, uh, oh no. I'm sorry, October 29th. 4.30 to 6.30 at the municipal building. Uh, kids encouraged to wear their costumes and uh, we'll go through the haunted house. They'll be able to pick pumpkins, go on a hayride. Pre-registration is required on the uh, recreation website. So anyone that would like to sign their kids up for that, please go onto the recreation website. Uh, new this year, as a result of our new uh, dog park, we'll also be having a doggy Halloween party. 
That'll be Saturday, October the 31st at 11 a.m. Anyone wants to bring their dog, uh, complete with uh, a costume context. Anyone that wants to come on out that morning at the dog park at Ann Van Middlesworth Park. And also uh, Winter Basketball League's uh, registration is now open uh, for the town leagues. Uh, we have open for boys fourth to eighth grade and girls fourth to sixth grade. Games are usually on Saturday with a practice during the week and the high school league will play on Monday evenings. And finally, uh, just a reminder, our second annual Hillsboro Senior Olympics will be held on Friday, October the 2nd with a rain date of Monday, the October, October the 5th. Uh, events will include basketball, beanbag toss, pickleball, ladder ball, golf, bocce, and horseshoes, and medals are awarded to our seniors for the various events. Participation fee is $10 and includes uh, the games as well as the t-shirt and lunch is also available uh, for an additional charge. Pre-registration and uh, for both the event and lunch is required and you can sign up through with social services and uh, you may see these around. Uh, I'll let Kaz zoom in on that for us just to get an idea of uh, you'll see these around the municipal building. Please if you'd like to sign up it was a great event last year we had uh, a terrific number of participants I think somewhere around 100 uh, seniors participated and uh, we'd love to have everyone come out and participate again this year. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Committeewoman uh, Committee McCauley. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everybody. A few things for me tonight. I attended a business event over by the uh, Warden and Green Century 21 Tractor Supply Planet Fitness Mall on Saturday afternoon. Um, was it Sunday? I think it was Sunday afternoon. And uh, just trying to promote businesses over there. There are a few new ones, so if you get a chance to stop in there. Uh, they're really trying to promote them, so it's always fun to go out and uh, meet new business owners and try to uh, enforce that we have those local businesses here in town. So I wanted to thank them for the invitation. Um, Leadership Somerset is now applying up, uh, accepting applications for 2016. There will be an open house on Tuesday, September 22nd from 8 to 9 a.m. or Thursday, October 1st from 4.30 to 5.30 p.m. The open house will be held in the Freeholders Meeting Room at the county on 20, at 20 Grove Street. The application deadline is October 31st. The benefits of this program, which I attended, and I think some other people on the day has had attended this, it really is a great program. So if you're interested in applying, um, it's including networking with community leaders, it's discovering the uh, county resources, what they have to offer, exploring capacities of positive leadership, enhancing team and leadership skills, and making an impact in your community. Um, it's a very nice thing that the county does. So if anyone's interested, please reach out to us or the county for further information. We did have a small business recycling in the back here at the township building. It has been relocated to the public works yard at 22 East Mountain Road. It's open from 8 a.m. until 2 p.m. It's for small businesses to recycle. I started the program a few years ago. For those businesses that don't have a lot of recycling but choose to recycle, you can also dump um, plastic, cardboard, paper, and recycling needs of the community over there. So again, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m at the DPW area on 22 East Mountain Road. Just a reminder, the library is hosting its third annual Small Business Expo on Saturday, October 3rd, from 11 until 3. You can come out and support local businesses starting up in the community. They'll introduce their products and services, and it's a really nice attended event usually. So if you're interested in what's new in town, you can certainly come out. Again, it's October 3rd from 11 a.m. until 3. Also on Monday, October 12th, at the library from 7 to 8.30. Um, Somerset County Surrogate Frank Bruno, who will be at the uh, library to speak about how to probate a will in the Somerset County Surrogates Court. For those of you who are not familiar with the process, I'm sure it's a difficult one. He's, he'll be here to talk about it and share information about how the recent changes in the law um, regarding probate uh, need to be handled. It's a free program. Pre-registration registration is requested but not required to attend. Again, that is on October 12th from 7 to 8.30 p.m. That's it for me this evening, Mayor. Thank you, Committeeman uh, Sirachi. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just wanted to add on to what Committeeman uh, Delcourt said about uh, with regards to Flair Academy with their grand opening. What made that extra special was <clears throat> this was actually an expansion of their business. I believe they started off with a single d uh, dance classroom and now they've expanded to uh, a multi classroom facility. So it's always great to hear about a successful business in Hillsborough and growing and for the community to be supporting such a business. Also just want to uh, congrat congratulate Ms. Amanda Castellano. She was, the, uh, she was uh, Ms. Hillsborough uh, Unico 
and she represented Hillsborough in the John Bassalone parade uh, yesterday. The parade took place. So, again, uh, congratulations to Amanda, and she was uh, she's actually a local resident and also a uh, Hillsborough High School graduate recently. Okay, uh, finance updates. The fourth quarter 2015 tax bills, which will include the billing for the first two quarters of 2016, will be mailed the week of September 28th. Property owners are reminded to look at the block and lot identifier uh, on your tax bill, as many have been renamed. Uh, the online tax payment system has been updated to show the fourth quarter tax amounts for those property owners who wish to take advantage of paying online. Uh, police update. Hillsborough Township is committed to safety of our residents and those individuals who work and travel through Hillsborough. The Township supports the Street Smart New Jersey Pedestrian Safety Campaign in an effort to raise awareness on pedestrian traffic laws and public safety. Motorists are reminded of the following legal requirements. Drivers must stop for pedestrians in crosswalks to allow for their safe crossing. Uh, when a vehicle is stopped at a crosswalk to allow a pedestrian to cross, uh, it goes without saying that any vehicle approaching from the rear or from the opposite direction is also required to stop and not to pass the uh, stopped vehicle. And for, pe for pedestrians, uh, they also have legal requirements. Uh, no pedestrian is permitted to walk into the path, of vehicle in a the path of a vehicle that is so close. In other words, uh, just make sure you give the vehicles that are approaching those crosswalks enough time to cross. Um, well, I don't think we have any blind spots here, but if anyone has driven down the middle of um, Princeton there, sometimes that can be a hair-raising experience. Um, <clears throat> pedestrians should also use sidewalks when they are available, and if they aren't, and you need to walk along the side of the uh, roadway, to use the extreme left side of the roadway, mean walk towards traffic. Uh, so that you can, uh, again, see uh, the traffic coming at you. Uh, in addition to general pedestrian safety, the Hillsborough Police Department reminds motorists about the laws regarding school buses. Motorists are required to stop for stopped school buses with activated warning lights in either direction. When a school bus is stopped in the opposite direction across a divided median, uh, like Auton Road, uh, Motorists are required, and this is coming from the other direction, are required to, re to reduce their speed to 10 miles an hour to safely pass the vehicle. Obviously, uh, again, it goes with that same motors that fail to stop for buses are subject to violations. Uh, and in this Friday's e-newsletter, there will be more information regarding uh, pedestrian safety. Credit card update, I mentioned this at the last meeting, and you know there is still time to apply for a grant through the uh, for Hillsborough Rewards Credit Card Program. Uh, <clears throat> applications are available for Hillsborough Township-based nonprofit organizations that serve seniors and youths in the township. And this year, the grants have been increased to up to $2,000 uh, <coughs> per grant. Uh, the applications can be found online or is available in the administration office. And the deadline to submit, it is approaching relatively quickly. It is September 30th. So please do not delay and get those applications in. That's all I have this evening, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. A couple of comments from me this evening. First, I wanted to thank volunteer fire companies two and three. That's 206 and Woods Road uh, for holding 9-11 uh, ceremonies uh, on September 11th. Uh, I also want to thank the rescue squad and the police department. Uh, we have Lieutenant Framosk out here. Um, from the police department, but thank them all for making sure that Hillsborough has a place to properly pay the respects to everyone who lost their lives on September 11th. So uh, from this township committee, I know many of us attended those events. Thank you to those volunteers uh, that organized them. I know it does take a good deal of time, but it is certainly not lost on us and the residents of Hillsborough that they provide a place for us to properly uh, mourn the loss of what happened on that tragedy, uh, tragic day 14 years ago. Um, also, uh, we did have several grand, uh, business grand openings uh, in town. Uh, some of them were mentioned. Uh, Ray of Light Yoga had their uh, grand reopening uh, two Saturdays ago, along with Gary's uh, Wine and Liquor, located uh, next to ShopRite. And we also had the, the Flair grand opening that was mentioned. I want to congratulate all those different businesses for opening, reopening in town, and uh, calling Hillsborough their home. 
Also, I want to thank uh, Deputy Mayor Greg Burchette and Committee Member McCauley. Uh, for this past Wednesday, they volunteered at ShopRite for an hour to uh, bag groceries for, I believe it's called Bag for Hunger, uh, to help eliminate uh, people in need who are hungry. So thank you for taking the time to do that. We do appreciate that on behalf of the committee. Um, and also on to a couple of different events that have happened in the town recently. As many of people are aware, on Wednesday, September 16th, the New Jersey Racing Commission approved an application for an OTW to be located at the former Maestro's 206 restaurant. That application is now subject to review by the Attorney General's office. Any additional comments or concerns should be directed to the New Jersey Racing Commission or the, to the Attorney, uh, Attorney General's office if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. Also at the last meeting, we announced that the township is actively using Twitter. And over the weekend, we're proud to say we had 100 followers. Uh, pretty exciting uh, since we haven't done that much advertising. But be sure to follow the township on Twitter and register for the Honeywell Instant Alert and Nixle systems and subscribe to the Friday e-newsletter. I believe we have cards in the back of the room uh, if you want to sign up for the e-newsletter. And, uh, and through there, you can see the information how to get Nixle and also uh, the Honeywell Instant Alerts. And just a quick reminder again, if you would like to submit any local landscape or scenery photos for consideration in the 2016 town calendar, please send in your high resolution photos to the township clerk at pborak at hillsborough-nj.org in lieu of spelling that. If you'd like to sign up for the e-newsletter, as previously mentioned, you can do that. Uh, and again, those have to be in by October 15th, so you have a couple weeks left. Also for any hockey fans, December 11th is the Hillsborough Township New Jersey Devils My Town Series hockey game. So please mark your calendars. More information and ticket details will be coming out uh, shortly again in that e-newsletter. Hope you're seeing a theme. Uh, also, we have our proclamations this evening. I'm going to ask everyone that as we do our proclamations and presentations, after you receive yours, if you could please take a seat and uh, stay here for everyone else to be properly recognized. After that, uh, we will take a brief break so that if you don't want to stay for the whole meeting, I'll be, my feelings will be hurt, but I certainly understand if you'd like to go. So we will take a break so that you uh, will have an opportunity to leave. And again, photos from this, uh, all the proclamations we do post in the e-newsletter. So if you don't get the e-newsletter, there's forms in the back to fill out. Uh, first up this evening, uh, we're going to be proclaiming September as Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. And I believe uh, our council, Eric Bernstein, will be receiving that proclamation on behalf of that uh, awareness. So Eric, please. Whereas 46 children in the United States are diagnosed with cancer each day, and whereas one out of five children diagnosed with cancer will not survive the disease, and whereas childhood cancer is not just one disease but is made up of a dozen types and countless subtypes of cancer, the types of cancers that affect children are most often very different from those that affect adults, and whereas childhood cancer spares no socioeconomical, ethnic, racial, or geographical class, and whereas pediat pediatric cancer is the leading cause of death by disease in the United States in children under 19 years of age, the causes of most pediatric cancers are largely unknown and not strongly linked to lifestyle, unlike adult cancers. And whereas two-thirds of childhood cancer patients will develop long-lasting chronic conditions as a result from treatment that prevent them from fully participating in school, social activities, and work. And whereas childhood cancer's rates have been rising for the past few decades and approximately 15,780 children were diagnosed in 2014, the incidence of invasive pediatric cancer is up 29% in the past 20 years alone. And whereas despite the major advances in treatment, childhood cancer research is vastly and consistently underfunded and is still critically important to conduct research and increase awareness regarding pediatric cancer. Now therefore, be proclaimed that we, the mayor of the Township Committee of Township of Hillsburg, do hereby declare September 20, 2015 as National Childhood Cancer Awareness Month in order to help raise awareness of pediatric cancer and its victims. Mr. Bernstein is also here on behalf of the Sickle Cell Awareness uh, Month, so I will read that proclamation as well. Whereas sickle cell disease is the most commonly genetic disorder in the United States, and an estimated 100,000 people live with sickle cell disease in the United States. Up to 80% are African Americans, but many different races are affected and millions are affected glo globally. 
And whereas sickle cell disease occurs in about one out of 500 African American births, and whereas sickle cell disease is a group of inherited red blood cell disorders that is present at birth and have the disease, both sets of parents must pass down sickle cell genes. And whereas sickle cell disease is, a diagnosed, is diagnosed with a simple blood test and is most often found at birth during routine newborn screenings, and since children with SCD are at an increased rate of infection and other health problems, early diagnosis and treatment are important. And whereas sickle cell disease is chronic but treatable, although there is no single best treatment for all people with SCD, treatment options are different for each person depending on the symptoms, which can range from mild to severe. And whereas there is no universal cure for sickle cell disease, and the average life expectancy is now in the mid-40s years of age, now, therefore, be it proclaimed that we, the mayor of the Township Committee of the Township of Hillsborough, do hereby recognize September 2015 as Sickle Cell Awareness Month and call upon citizens, government agencies, organizations, health care providers, and research institutions to raise sickle cell disease awareness and continuing to help people live longer, healthier lives. And now, uh, Mr. Bernstein will tell us a little bit more about both of those. Close enough, Cass. Uh, I apologize for that, but I'm spend enough time here with the uh, cameraman telling everybody to get close enough to the mic. Uh, I am here on behalf of the Valerie Fund, a children's cancer and blood disorder organization based here in New Jersey. I'm actually filling in for my wife, Mary, who is the chair of the board, and Barry Kirshner, the executive director, both of whom wish would be here tonight, but unfortunately have another fund situation to attend. The Valerie Fund was created almost 40 years ago by Ed and Sue Goldstein, both Somerset County residents, to provide for opportunities for children and their families to be treated for both childhood cancer and blood disorders here in New Jersey when there wasn't an opportunity except in New York and in Philadelphia. In the approximately last 40 years, the fund has created seven centers, six of them in New Jersey at Overlook Hospital and Summit, Newark, Beth Israel and Newark, Morristown Memorial in Morristown, St. Barnabas in Livingston, Monmouth Medical in Neptune, and an affiliate of the Children's Health uh, Hospital Philadelphia in Voorhees, as well as at New York Presbyterian uh, Hospital in New York. Uh, we treat between four and 5,000 children every year for <coughs> this type of cancer and blood disorders in all of our centers, approximately 25,000 visits by these people along with the families. Uh, we have been successful in not only addressing many of these issues, but providing opportunities for the kids to attend a week-long camp up in Tyler Hill, Pennsylvania, known as Camp Happy Times, which they get to go to every year and act like children, at least for one week, as well as we have now established a very extensive scholarship program because more and more of our children are actually going into remission and being cured of childhood cancer and blood disorders, and therefore, eligible to go to college. Um, we've raised last year in excess of five and a half million dollars for this situation, hoping we'll do better this year. If anyone is interested in knowing more about the Valerie Fund, in participating and becoming a volunteer, in joining in some of our programs or donating, they can check out the website at www colon the Valerie Fund, V-A-L-E-R-I-E, -E, fund all one word, Org. And thank you again on behalf of the fund mayor and the committee and the administration. Thank you, and please thank your wife and thank Mr. Kirshner for your tireless efforts uh, on behalf of the Township Committee in Hillsborough for bringing awareness to the disease and also for uh, its treatment. Next we have a proclamation uh, for Suicide Awareness Month. Is anyone here to receive that proclamation? Mr. Wolf? Come down. community can experience. 
And whereas annually, more than 40,000 lives are lost, and it's estimated that for every suicide, there are eight to 25 attempted suicides. And whereas suicide is the second leading cause of death of adolescents between the ages of 15 and 24 in the United States, there is one completed suicide every 12.8 minutes in the United States, which is 113 per day, and over 40,000 per year. And whereas it is estimated that 4.73 million people in the United States are survivors of suicide, those who have lost a loved one, Whereas suicide is the fourth leading cause of death in New Jersey's youth, and Hillsborough has experienced at least 17 confirmed suicides over the last 15 years, and these figures are statistically significant in a community our size. Whereas Borough Safe Suicide Awareness for Everyone is a community-based organization in Hillsborough whose goal is to raise community awareness that suicide is preventable and resources available. And whereas public awareness of this terrifying problem is the key to preventing further suffering and loss of life, and the risk of human self-destruction can be reduced through awareness, education and treatment and has the highest risk for suicide is among survivors of those who have died by suicide or those who have attempted suicide. And whereas suicide prevention has been declared a national priority by the President and Congress and the New Jersey and New Jersey declare suicide prevention as a state priority. Now therefore be it proclaimed that we the Mayor of the Township Committee of Township of Hillsborough do hereby declare September 2015 as Suicide Awareness Month and encourages the citizens of Hillsborough to educate themselves of the warning signs of suicide, understand that suicide is preventable, and know there are resources available for, for your help. There you go. Would you mind uh, say a couple words about Borough Safe? And Borough Safe's been around for a few years now, and we are a committee in the high school, made up of high school teachers, student assistance counselors, clergy, and we're adding more members every year. And our goal is to prevent suicide in the high school part of a larger picture of what's going on in Hillsborough Township to prevent suicide altogether, not simply in high school students, but in every situation. So I'm proud to be part of that and the faith-based par faith partnership uh, with the superintendent of schools and look forward to seeing many more lives saved and people helped. Thank you, Reverend, for all your work. And I know that uh, Community and Carl Sirachi has been working with the superintendent and the schools on that issue. So again, thank you for bringing awareness uh, to this for us. Now we have, is Nicholas here? Come on up. For me. <laughs> Whereas Hillsborough resident Nicholas Namorosa, did I get it? Yeah. Right. A 2010 graduate of Hillsborough High School and a Hillsborough Township athlete participated in the Team New Jersey 2014 Special Olympic Games, receiving a gold medal for first place in bowling. And whereas Nick also serves as an usher at Mary Mother of God Church in Hillsborough Township. And whereas Nick also received first place trophies in 2012 and 2013 second place trophies in 2010 and 2011, and a third place trophy in 2009 for bowling. And whereas Nick is also a gold medalist in swimming and has received over 50 medals and nine trophies for bowling and swimming combined. And whereas Nick is a member of the Montgomery Special Olympic soccer team and in 2013 and 14 earned up both gold and bronze medals along with two trophies. And whereas the mission of the Special Olympics of New Jersey is to provide year-round sports training and I'm sorry, athletic competition in a variety of Olympic type sports for children and adults with intellectual disabilities by giving them continuing opportunities to develop physical fitness, demonstrate courage, experience joy and participation in a sharing of gifts, skills and friendship for th with their families, other Special Olympic athletes and their community. Now therefore, be it proclaimed that we, the Mayor of the Township Committee, the Township of Hillsborough, do hereby recognize and honor the great accomplishments of Nicholas and we are proud that he's a member of our community. Be it further proclaimed that we, the Mayor of the Township Committee, do hereby recognize and extend our sincere congratulations to Nicholas for receiving gold, silver, and bronze medals in bowling, swimming, and soccer, in honor for both him and for those who have guided him with the best wishes for a bright future. Congratulations.
Yeah. 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 First of all, um, I would like to say thank you to my to my to my wonderful proud mom, who's who's there for me, who's there for me to support, and you know I'm so thankful. I feel so blessed about it. And to my sis, to my two, to my two sisters, thank you so much, and I love both of you too. And to my aunt, thanks so much for everything the support. And I, I I've been telling my friends from camp that um, I'm receiving the awards, but I couldn't make it. But I told them about good news, and I was I was so excited when I, when when I tell my intern my to the UK friends. So, Mayor Doug, I'm. It's been my honor for me um, that, 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 that received these awards. I'm so, so thankful for everything. So God bless. Congratulations. Okay, we have one more award this evening. Is Lewis here? I think that's you. You're the only one who can fit in this thing, so I think it's got to be you. I definitely can't fit in that. Yeah, that's that's live right now. No pressure. <laughs> and you got to say a couple words too. All right. Wow, he's confident. He's better than me. All right. Whereas Hillsborough resident Louis Bizco. Did I get that right? Bizco. You say. Bizco. Bizco. Start over. Cats, you can edit that. Whereas Hillsborough resident Louis Bizco is a fifth grade student at Auton Road Intermediate School. And whereas Lewis won the New Jersey Regional Stock Soapbox Derby title on June 7, 2015 in the 7 to 13 years of age division. And whereas Lewis attended the World Championship All-American Soapbox Derby in Akron, Ohio this past summer. And whereas Soapbox Derby Racing provides young people with an opportunity to test their skills by requiring participants to build their own machine. You built that? Good job. And field in a high-speed competition helping participants to build a fine sense of sportsmanship. And whereas Lewis has been racing in the New Brunswick Soapbox Derby for, over, for the last four years, and whereas Lewis is an active young man, and in his spare time he enjoys playing the drums, and is also a goalie for his ice hockey team and lacrosse teams, now therefore be proclaimed by the man in the Township Committee of Township of Hillsborough that Lewis is hereby recognized not only for his New Jersey Regional Stock Soapbox Derby title, but also for his unwavering dedication and sportsmanship. Be further proclaimed that we, the Mayor of the Township Committee, congratulate Lewis for his achievement and wish him all the best in his future endeavors Congratulations, Lewis. This car is now retired, so I have, yeah, so we have to build a new one this year and next year, and in, uh, in Akron, we trade pins to everybody there, and I'm going to give it to everyone. Oh, that's great. Thank you.
That's good. Leave that for him. I'll make him wear it. He's outside right now. I will say again, congratulations. Thank you for the pin. And again, I'll make sure I get you a pin before you leave, okay? All right. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Lewis. Great job. Okay. I want to thank everyone for joining us this evening. And congratulations to all of our award recipients and to everyone who came out to recognize uh, the various uh, months that we are designating here in Hillsborough. At this time, we're going to pause for a very brief break. So again, if you don't want to stay, I understand, but I encourage you to do so. Again, thank you for coming tonight. Congratulations to everyone uh, who attended this evening. Thank you. We're good. Okay. Welcome back. Um, there is no new business this evening, so we're going to move to public comment on new business and matters not on the agenda. Is there, please come up. Uh, the microphone got moved. Sorry. I, th I thought I put it over there. And if you could state your name and address for the record, please. Susan Gulliford, Hunt Club Road. Uh, I attended the New Jersey Racing Commission meeting last week for the commissioner's vote on Hillsborough's proposed off-track wagering facility. I got to say I found the process incredibly unsatisfying, which I think almost everyone there from Hillsborough did. Um, I'd like to thank the mayor and the assemblymen who attended. I don't think the commission had any intention of hearing public comments until they saw you two there. I really don't. There was nothing on the agenda. We were talking in the hall about public comment, and it was like a confused look. So I'm glad you guys were there. And despite it all, I really think it was worth the effort to attend, even though it was a long way off in the middle of the day. And a lot of us had to clear our schedules to be there. And I'd like to thank you for being there. And I think it was important for Hillsborough to be represented. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> Is there, okay. We do have more uh, public comment. So, no, you, please. On matters not on the agenda. And if, again, you, if you could state your name and address for the record, please. Good evening. My name is. Is it on? Yep. My name is Anita Ciano. I live at 12 Spring Valley Drive. And I'm uh, here to ask that attention be paid to both Winding Way and Spring Valley Drive. The condition of our roads is dangerous and deplorable at this time. As you know, uh, some work had begun at the beginning of June to put in the sanitary sewer system and stopped abruptly in the middle of July. But during the time that they were working on it, the multiple cuts were made into both of the streets. And when they left abruptly, they left deep furrows, um, a lot of dust in the street, a lot of rocks in the street. <clears throat> Initially, there were no danger signs put up at either end of Spring Valley Drive or on Winding Way. Excuse me a second. That's okay. <laughs> and um, so cars were going at an extremely fast rate of speed. I don't know why, but there were billows of dust and dirt over 200 feet high, just it's going up. gigantic billows of dust. Nothing was done. I, I asked for something to be done for the road for the reasons of safety and for our, you know, for our homes because we've been breathing this dust, etc. But if you drive down the street right now, you will see at both ends it says rough road. That's all, that is all that has been done. I'm not talking at this time about the project, which has at a standstill. That's another thing. What I'm asking for is a safe, clean road that's appropriate to drive on. There are furrows that are like this. Spring Valley Drive is horrendous. Please come visit. Drive down the street. You will see that you can't drive more than four miles an hour. Uh, one of the residents has had a flat tire because of it. Others, you know, can have damage to their cars. But the other part is I just want to have, I already have to deal with a septic, which I've been dealing with for 20 years. I know that eventually, hopefully, that will be resolved. But 
I do think we should have a safe street. It's, and it is not a small thing. This morning when I was driving to work, I work in Somerville. I drive, I drive on um, Old Camp Plain Road. Mm -hmm. And I saw a nice, beautiful uh, street cleaner cleaning Camp, Old Camp Plain Road, which has two homes and the rest are businesses. I asked for this quite a long time ago. In July, I've seen nothing. So I'm asking for some attention to those two streets. Okay. A uh, couple of things before I need to before you walk away. Uh, obviously, the situation that happened with the company there uh, certainly exacerbated how long the project was supposed to be. I believe the project was originally slated for 60 days. Uh, that certainly is not the case because the company that was doing it went bankrupt. Uh, this project would have been completed uh, at this point, and that's obviously very unfortunate. And item number seven on our agenda this evening we're going to be dealing with that specifically and we're going to talk about it a little more in depth right so i now. hope you and the residents that are here could stick around for that that's Absolutely. one uh, mm -hmm. two obviously uh what i'll ask is through our administrator if we could have just our dpw team just to take a, a look over there i drove down there it was about a month ago uh between when the project first failed uh i shouldn't say failed when the company went bankrupt uh, shortly, maybe about a month after that, I drove through there, and it, it, it was in the middle of a construction project, and that's very evident. But we'll, we could take a look at that, and I yeah, know if, that I, if you don't mind, Mary, I can no, uh, comment. I know uh, Dr. Bellney has been out there on a daily basis, and Tom Bellinger as well, our engineer. So as uh, we understand with you, it's an extremely unfortunate situation trying to get those roadways as best as we can. I, I know lieutenants here in the audience as well. I wasn't aware of high levels of speed causing that type of stuff. Uh, but working with Mr. Willard as well and the bonding company to try to get those guys out there as quickly as we can. Our DPW folks have done everything they possibly can with the equipment we have. But again, we're trying to move as fast as we can. Uh, we're hoping to get this project back on the road by the end of the month. But we'll go out there again tomorrow, have our engineer go back out there with, uh, with Dr. Bellney to make sure, obviously, from a health standpoint of any of the dust and look at how deep those burrows are. Well, and, and Lieutenant, I know you're with the, I don't know if you wanted to comment on anything else with any of the speeding or those roads. I wasn't aware of those. It, it, you don't have to speed. Let me just say, you don't have to speed to have it be dangerous to the car. You it's, can come to the There are furrows in the road. And uh, it, what the point I'm trying to make is that I don't feel that the project has to resume in order for attention to be paid to the road of residents <coughs> who pay taxes in this, in this wonderful town that I grew up in I, I really feel that we don't have to wait. We have been waiting for it to resume. That's not the point. If there was a dangerous situation in any road, road in this town, it should be paid attention to. Well, Anita, and I think you, I think you heard about. we're, we're going to have our DPW guys go out there, take a look to see if there's something we could possibly do in the interim. Right. Uh, and, and Mary, if I can, yes. This particular contractor walked off the job. I believe he had seven to nine public projects going at the time. He walked off all of them. Um, it was an unfortunate circumstance. With respect to this, fortunately, we do have a matter on the agenda. The surety has stepped up. The surety has arranged for a replacement contract to take place. I'm very hopeful that before the end of this month, you're going to see work out there, the completion of this, and the completion of the road. I understand what, you, what you're going through, and it's an unfortunate circumstances in the condition of the road. But you also have to understand, you don't want to spend funds to repave it and then just rip it up again. There is a normal process, I believe, to maintain the roads in the township, and that would be sweeping and using the street cleaner. We have not had the minimal attention to that road that yeah. I think so is normal for any township road. Can I just, uh, is it, so is that what, I, I just want to make sure we that understand is, what it is you're, you're, I want you'd like road. to see done. I want a safe road. Well, I, I understand that, but I, I, I'm sure you recognize that at some point we can't, until we get the project back, we probably can't do anything with the with the furrows in the road. That, but I'm wondering if there's something else you're looking for, just so we can make sure we're all aligned on what we can, what we I'm can do. I'm asking for a safe road. That's I, a I, I understand that, but I'm not asking for it to be repaved. I'd like the appropriate people to look at it and fill in some of those furrows to be until after right done. construction yeah. can resume. Say that. Well, and again, well, we made that commitment. We'll make sure DPW goes out, and if there's something we can do in the interim. Right now, it's still an ongoing construction project, so you know, unfortunately, we will take that into consideration. And obviously, once the project moves forward, I believe the plan is to repave the roadways in that area anyway. Yeah. So it might take a little bit of patience on your time or your part and some of your residents. I know, but we'll send them out. I know. Well, you know, dust in the in the hundred degree weather every summer is is tough enough in general. 
you know, so I understand that, but trying to get that under control. We will have that done as soon as possible, yeah. and you know, yeah, you'll, nobody, you'll see the result, you know, hopefully sooner than later. Nobody's happy that this occurred, but again, the surety has stepped up. We have something on the agenda right now. They have a contractor in place, and I'm very hopeful that before the end of the month that we're going to have activity out there again, you'll, and you'll, you'll have your sewers and, and paved roads on top of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do we have, um, Anita, before you leave, could you leave your... Uh, phone number so we could just reach back out to you after we have our DPW yeah, we, team. We, ha we have it. We have your contact. Okay. We'll reach them. Well, after we have, uh, take a look at it, we'll reach back out to you. Okay. Pretend I think we're okay if the, if the resident said that there's no speeding on the road in its current condition. We, so we have our okay. speed and split trailer out there. You know, okay. Yeah, we were in touch with, uh, and I don't know if it was you, ma'am, I apologize, um, the, the traffic bureau sergeant. The traffic bureau sergeant was in touch with residents down there. We did put our speed and split trailer down there. Okay. Um, I believe it's the speed limit's 25. I don't believe it's an excessive speed problem. I think it's, you know, 25 with its, if there's potholes and stuff, but you know, we can't, if somebody's doing 25 and making a pothole, it's 20, the speed limit's 25. We can't enforce somebody for doing 25 and a 25. So, gotcha. uh, okay. so we have been down there. We have had a speed display trailer down there alerting people to, uh, Okay. okay. All right. Thank, Thank you, you, Lieutenant. Just not to not to belabor that, but I, I know the lieutenant his his force has been out there, out. and they have shut the program the, the the project down in the past when they don't believe it's safe. So the police have been monitoring that road okay. since the project started. Yeah, there were things for, there were extensive problems with materials and equipment left in the roadway that we had to go down and demand that they be removed. They went on the right away for the improvements, but yes, Mr. Pullman said he walked away. They just yeah, walked he, off the job. They this wasn't a circumstance where there was any dispute between him and the township. He literally just right. walked off the job, and he walked off of about seven to nine others in the state. Okay. Just just got up and left. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant. If you could please state your name and address for the record, please. Mary Direction, 16 Spring Valley Drive. Thank you, Mary. There was a speed sign put down there, but it was on the cul-de-sac of Winding Way, and it was situated in front of my neighbor's house of Carol and Bill Powers. And that was down toward the cul-de-sac. That's not where people were speeding. They were speeding from White Metal, White Metal Road through Spring Valley. They'd come right straight through the stop sign. Okay, we can certainly have the traffic guys take another look at that. So I, I appreciate that very much. Okay. Thank you. Time if you could oh, just make one more thing. That. On my property is the easement and they cut Three of my pipes on there, and if we get a torrential rainstorm, when, I don't know, my sump pumps are not going to be pumping because they cut the pipes in and they won't drain. So I have no pipes back there when they cut them. So I appreciate that somebody could do something about it on the easement. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other comment on matters not on the agenda this evening? Please state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Uh, it's Raymond Lyota, L-I-O-T-T-A, to Aldrin Court. Uh, I'm here to ask the committee to help address a nuisance issue that's affecting my neighborhood and the quality of life in the neighborhood, and that has to do with the brick factory property on Hamilton Road. Uh, every evening almost and every weekend day, the uh, people who use dirt bikes and quads are in the brick factory for hours and they make a tremendous amount of noise and somewhere along the line someone is going to get hurt uh, but strictly for our neighborhood it's a huge nuisance we can't even sit on our back porches and not be uh, inundated with the noise from those the equipment that they use now we call the police they send a car, they chase them, they're back an hour later. So if there's something we can do with the property owner or something relative to the Sorry. use of that property now, please do it. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Aldrin, uh, Aldrin, right? What? Leota. Le I'm sorry. We're done. Sorry. Raymond. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, my neighborhood where I live is almost adjacent to that. Uh, I'm back by the racquetball club, and I can assure you I hear the exact same thing. We've been in touch with the police department. Um, what we found out is a lot of times these guys are originating out of Manville, and as we put our cars out there, 
they're going straight back to Manville. And when we're gone, they come back. We've been going back and forth. We've had numerous conversations uh, yes, with the police department in Manville. Um, this is an ongoing issue. Um, I don't know if there's Minister Yeah, Francis, I had, I had a conversation with the chief this morning uh, at our 9 o'clock briefing. I don't know, Lieutenant's over there again. I, don't, I know the chief had said that he'd spoken to you as well. I don't know if you had anything to add to the microphone again, uh, but we definitely have been on this. We've been, I know that both chiefs have been working with Manville and the residents, but I don't know if the lieutenant has anything more to add. And like I said, I spoke to the chief this morning. And I do it. know the property owner was made aware, and we've asked them to address it. Um, that property is in, I guess the property is in flux right now, because uh, I do believe it's for sale or contingent for sale. So there's a lot of different players involved, but um, it's not lost on us because, again, uh, I know about it, uh, I, and I've talked to several residents about it as well. So, Lieutenant. Um, I just want to address some of Mr. Layout's concerns. We, we've been down here 27 times. Um, I know, I'm sure you and um, some of your neighbors, well, 27 times since May. Um, we did catch somebody over the weekend. We did, uh, okay. Summons. Uh, but like you said, Mayor, the, you know, the problem is we go in there with a police car, and we can only get so far with the police car when they see the police. They try to away. Yep. Um, we have had uh, contact with the property owner, which I think is a real estate, out-of-state real estate development company. Mm -hmm. We've asked that they give us a trespass letter and, and allowing us to basically say nobody's allowed to be there riding quads. They've given nobody permission, and they authorize us to sign complaints for that. We have not yet, okay. um, which I, I don't know how big the corporation is um, that owns it. But um, so that's just a little bit of you know, red tape. Now it doesn't mean there's nothing we can do, but we have had we've had contact with the owner. I know you've had correspondence with us as well. Uh, could yes, you reach? Could you have uh, the department reach back out sure. to them? Okay. That thank would you. be very helpful. Thank you very much. No, thank you. And again, we're well aware. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you Lieutenant. Okay. Any other matters not on the agenda this evening? Seeing none, we're going to move on to. Uh, uh, we have no public hearings or, or nor any ordinance introductions this evening, so we move on to considerations. First up is a resolution awarding a contract for the 2015 Capital Roadways Resurfacing to Top Line Construction Corporation in an amount not to exceed $467,397.44. On September 9th, the township received six sealed, sorry, six sealed bids for the above mentioned project, the lowest being from Top Line Construction. This resolution authorizes the contract to be awarded uh, for top line and those projects include Longfield Drive and White Circle. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. Any comments from the dais? Comments from the floor? Seeing none, roll call please. Freedman Delcor. Yes. Freedman McCauley. Yes. Freedman Sirachi. Yes. And Mayor Thompson. Yes. Moving on to resolution number two, authorizing the appointment of Andy Morvin. Uh, Oso Sekira as a part-time technical support assistant at an hourly rate of $18 per hour, not to exceed 29 hours per week, effective September 22nd, 2015, pending results of a background check. There exists a vacancy in the part-time technical support assistant position, and he has been uh, through the interview process to fill that vacancy. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Thank you. Any comments from the dais? Yeah, Mayor, I had an opportunity to interview him along with uh, Jim Moriarty, our IT director. He couldn't be here this night. He goes to uh, college at night, so uh, he couldn't join us, but I think he's going to do a great job here in the township for us. Great. Glad to hear. Any other comments from the dais? From the floor? Seeing none, roll call, please. Mayor Mandel Four. Yes. Mayor McCauley. Yes. Mayor Sirachi. Yes. Mayor Thompson. Yes. Congratulations, Andy. Resolution number three, authorizing adjustments in the amount not to exceed of various professional service contracts for the year 2015. This resolution authorizes the adjustments required to complete our anticipated legal obligations through the rest of this year, 2015. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Thank you. Any comments from the dais? Comments from the floor? Seeing none, roll call, please. Mayor Mandel Four. Yes. Mayor McCauley. Yes. Mayor Sirachi. Yes. Mayor Thompson. Yes, resolution number four, authorizing the hiring of Keith Snyder to fill a vacancy in the Hillsborough Township Building Department for a full-time position of multi-licensed inspector effective September 22nd, 2015, at a salary of 54000 per year, subject to a successful background check. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> Thank you. Any Sweet. comments from the dais? Yes, Mayor. I also had an opportunity to uh, interview Keith along with, I know, uh, Mr. Fiedler is back there as well. They're a building code official. And uh, it's going to be very helpful in the township with this multi-license, as well as extensive customer service background, which is what uh, we strive for here in the town. So very confident in that. 
hired. As always, Keith, we get our new employees on camera, so Kaz has you on spotlight there. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Yeah. In a minute, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any other comments from the dais? Comments from the floor? Seeing none, roll call, please. Karen Delcor. Yes, Karen welcome. McCauley. Yes. Karen Sarashi. Yes, and welcome. Mayor Thompson. Yes, congratulations. Thank you. Resolution number five, authorizing the appointment of Robert DiGiorio as a part-time clean communities worker for Hillsborough Township at an hourly rate of $14.50 per hour, not to exceed 29 hours per week, effective September 22nd, 2015. Robert has worked at DPW in the summer health capacity for the last three months and has the necessary qualifications to handle the required tasks. May have a motion. So moved. Second. Oops, sorry, Carl. Any comments from the dais? From the floor. Seeing none, roll call, please. Raymond Delcor. Yes. Raymond McCauley. Yes. Raymond Sirachi. Yes. Mayor Thompson. Yes. Congratulations, Robert. Resolution number six, authorizing the hiring of Christopher Huddy as building inspector in the Township Building Department, effective September 22nd, 2015. There is a, a vacancy uh, remaining, va I'm sorry, there's a remaining vacancy that needs to be filled in the building department. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Thank you. Any comments from the dais? Yes, I've also had an opportunity to interview Chris as well and uh, with building code official John Fiedler. Uh, again, multi-license again, uh, continue education, and again, a uh, business owner in his past, so having that customer service. And I'm proud to say the building part will now be at full capacity. So uh, we're very happy to have Chris uh, join us again from part-time to full-time. John Fiedler looks very happy back there. And John has <laughs> a smile on his face <laughs> today. So thank you, Chris, for coming along. And welcome to Hillsborough. Any other comments from the dais? Comments from the floor? Seeing none, roll call, please. Karen Delcor. Yes, and Karen, welcome. Karen McCauley. Yes. Karen Sarachi. Yes, welcome Mayor, aboard. Mayor Thompson. Congratulations, yes. <laughs> Uh, resolution number seven, author, uh, approving takeover agreements between the Township of Hillsborough and Aegis Security Insurance Company for the completion of the sanitary sewer extension project. OTS New Jersey uh, was awarded a contract on January 27, 2015 for a sanitary sewer extension construction project. OTS New Jersey failed to satisfy performance obligations and under said contract and abandoned this project. The Township declared OTS NJ in default. Thus, Aegis Security Insurance Company has agreed to undertake the completion of the remaining scope of work for the sanitary sewer extension project. Um, may I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any comments from the dais? And I believe we do have some from our council. Um, well, I think we discussed think them earlier, we, but uh, yeah. the circumstances are we discussed OTS defaulted under, under their agreement. Uh, they walked off the job. Uh, they did post bonds, performance bonds, and uh, the security company was Age Security Insurance Company. They've stepped up. They've arranged for a contractor to take over the job. And uh, this takeover agreement is necessary to uh, sign them up and get the project going again. Okay. When would we expect them to actually be on the job once we sign the takeover agreement? Uh, I've been pushing the surety pretty hard uh, ever, ever since this occurred, and they've, they've been pretty cooperative. Um, my timeline is I would like to see them on the job before the end of the month. Uh, we do have to set up a pre-construction meeting because it is an NJEIT finance project, so we have to set up a, a, a pre-construction meeting with the state. Uh, but once that takes place, uh, my understanding is the contract should, contractor should be ready to go. My understanding is the contractor is Stylo, who does work uh, locally. They, matter, matter of fact, do work at uh, Country Classics. So they're, they're not unfamiliar to the township. I believe they're out of Bound Brook, their local company. Yeah, the other thing I wanted to say, uh, Mayor and the committee, between Bill and Nancy and, and Tom Bellinger and Mazur and Dr. Bellinger, who's leading the project, we have been on this every day. So for the residents out there, I don't care whatever time of the day, morning, night, you can either call me or Dr. Bellany and we'll get out there because we want to try and get done as everything we possibly can. And I think Dr. Bellany has done a pretty good job uh, of communicating out there because obviously we want this project done as quick as you do. But again, we can only push these guys as, as much as we can, but I, I think we've pushed them to the brink at this point. So we feel pretty confident that the actual the next uh, contractor might even be better than the person we actually had originally. So I think it's good news. Okay. And uh, before the first snowfall. Any, <laughs> any comments from the dais? Be because it has happened in October. That's why I say that. It has. And, and, just, so, and just so the residents are, because um, I'm sure cost is also a concern, that it doesn't increase the cost of the project. They had posted a performance bond uh, for the contract amount, and the new contractor would have to comply with that, and uh, the surety's on the hook for that. So it's not like it, it's not like it increases the project cost. Okay. Any other comments from the dais? Any comments from the floor? Okay.
Seeing none, we're going to go to roll call, please. Raymond Delcor. Yes. Raymond McCauley. Yes. Raymond Sirachi. Yes. Mayor Thompson. Yes. Resolution number eight, authorizing execution of agreement to municipal shared service defense agreement pertaining to the declaratory judgment action for approval of an affordable housing compliance plan. Tangent been entered into a municipal shared services defense agreement with Dr. Robert Bushnell, the expert to be retained. He has since become ill and therefore an amendment to the agreement is necessary to reassign this agreement. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Any comments from the dais? Comments from the floor? Seeing none, roll call please. Raymond Delcor. Yes. Mayor McCauley? Yes. Raymond Sirachi? Yes. Mayor Thompson? Yes. Moving on to a consent agenda this evening. May I have a motion to approve said consent agenda? So moved. Second. Thank you. Any comments from the dais? Comments from the floor? Seeing none, roll call please. Raymond Delcor? Yes. Mayor McCauley? Yes. Raymond Sirachi? Yes. Mayor Thompson? Yes, move, uh, may I have a motion to approve, I'm sorry, may I have a motion to approve claims list 2015-18? So, so moved. moved. Thank you. Okay. Have a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, roll call, please. Commander Duckworth. Yes. Yes. Commander Yes. Mayor Thompson. Yes. Uh, moving on, this concludes our regular meeting this evening. We do have an executive session this evening. Ms. Brock, can you please read the executive resolution? Whereas Section 8 of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1975, permits the exclusion of the public from a meeting in certain circumstances, and whereas the Township Committee is of the opinion that such circumstances exist, now therefore be resolved. The Township Committee of Township Hillsborough and the County of Somerset State of New Jersey as follows, the public shall be excluded from discussion in, of the hearing after specified subject matter. Number two, the general nature of the subject matter to be discussed is as follows, A, contract negotiations, cable franchise agreement, B, litigation, affordable housing, and Hillsborough properties versus the Township of Hillsborough. Number three, the Township Committee may take official action on those items discussed in the executive session upon the completion of the executive session. Number four, the minutes of those discussions shall be made available to the public as soon as the matters under discussion are no longer of a sensitive or confidential nature. And number five, this resolution shall take effect on the agenda. Okay, we may have a motion. So moved. Second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Commander Delcor. Yes. 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 Mayor Thompson. Yes, we are now in executive session. Thank you.